Hi, in this video we are going to write a program to make a ball bounce around the screen. So I'm starting out with a program that we wrote a little bit ago, which has a ball move on the screen, but right when it gets to the end of the screen and we want it to bounce, it just goes away. So this program is going to take the things that we learned about graphics, the things that we learned about timers and animation, and a little bit of logic to, to make it all work. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time diagramming and thinking about how we would actually make a ball bounce on the screen. And this advice that I'm going to give you sort of applies to every program that you're going to be writing in the future. And, and is that it is worthwhile to spend more time diagramming and thinking about the problem and, and trying to really solve the problem before you code it up. So time spent solving the problem is always time saved coding. So let's go look at some slides. Okay, so this is the bouncing ball example. And here what I've done is take a big picture of a circle, which is our ball, I've blown it up, and I've labeled some important points here. So this center of the circle, I'm calling that, uh, that's a point that's at ball X and ball Y. So that's the center right here of the ball. Now, I've labeled another point, and so this right here, I've labeled some x positions. This is ball x, and the, the circle has some radius. I've drawn a line for the radius, and the, the length of that is radius. And so from there, I've labeled a few other important points on the x-axis. So this right here, this is called ball x. This is the x position corresponding to the center of the ball. And then right here, this is ball x minus radius. So we have the x position of the ball, and we subtract off the radius in the x direction. And this is ball x plus radius. So just labeling a few points on the x-axis. And then what I've done here is label a big red point called A. So A is on the left side of the ball. It's at the x position, ball x minus radius. And the question we want to know is, how do we know if this ball has sort of reached the edge of the wall? How do we know if it should bounce? Okay, well I've moved the ball a little bit and we can see that now the big point A, it's outside the screen and right here in the top left I've labeled x equals 0. So x equals 0 right here is this left side of our screen. So we know we should bounce if point A is less than 0. Okay, what's another way to say that? Well we could bounce if point A is less than 0 or we can ball, bounce if ball x minus radius is less than zero. And then I've also sort of written that in, in pseudocode. So it's almost like code, but not quite. So if the ball x minus radius is less than zero, then we'll bounce. We don't know exactly what it means yet to bounce, but that's what we're going to figure out. So using this diagram, let's go into our code and write up this program. Okay, so here we have the ball. Um, just moving, but we need it to bounce. So let's do a few things. First, I'm going to create variables called um, dx, and I'm going to set that equal to 2, and dy, and set that equal to 2. That's going to be the amount that the ball moves each time. So it's going to be moving by dx and dy. Those are the parameters to the move function. So now what we really need to do is figure out um, you know, how to get this ball to bounce. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function to do this work. So every time that draw gets called, we're just saying move the ball. But we don't just want to move now. What we really want to do is we want to check the walls. We want to see if we've moved into any walls. Well, you know, check walls is not yet defined, so we'll have to write that function. So we'll write function check walls. Okay, so now what we're going to do first is, well, we'll see how do we know if the ball is going to bounce off the right wall. So, well, we know it's going to bounce off the right wall if the ball dot get x plus the ball dot get radius, well, if that is greater than get width. Then what we want to do is reverse the direction that the ball is going. So we'll say dx equals minus dx. So let's just see what happens here. 
Alrighty, so it bounced off one wall, but then not off the bottom. So let's, so, this will say bounce off right wall. Let's see if we can get it to bounce off the bottom. So to get it to bounce off the bottom, what we want to know is if the ball dot get y plus the ball dot get radius, so the bottom of the ball, it's greater than get height. Then we'll say dy equals negative dy, which is just reversing the direction. So this is bounce off bottom wall. So let's run this. Okay, we're on our way. So now I'm going to set the position of the ball um, to be 100, 100, just at the start, to make this a bit simpler for now. So now what I want to do is get it to bounce off the left wall, and I'm going to write that here. So to bounce off the left wall, we say if ball.getx minus ball.getradius is less than zero, then dx equals negative dx. So this is exactly the example we looked at in the slides. Um, and let's run this. Alrighty, we are very, very close. And so we need to get the top wall. And so we'll say if ball.getY, so that's the center, uh, y position of the ball, minus ball.getRadius is less than zero, so is the ball ab above the top of the window, then dy equals negative dy. Change the y direction. So we say bounce off top wall. So let's make the speed a little bit faster. Let's say 4, 4. Let's run this. And there you go. We have a bouncing ball. And this is totally an interesting program. And this is the foundation for a lot of games that you can write. And we've done this in not that much code. This first part, uh, I'll stop the ball so we don't distract ourselves. There's a few parts of the program, so let's take a look at them one more time. We declare our global variables. These are the variables that need to exist between functions. We want to have as few of those as possible. Then in our start function, we create our ball, and we just set up the timer to set our animation going. And then in our draw function, we make it as simple as possible. At each time around, we want to check the walls, and then we want to move the ball. So all the interesting stuff happens again in check walls. And what we're really saying at a high level is what I wrote in the comments. You know, we need to see if, if we need to bounce off the right wall. Do we need to bounce off the left wall? Do we need to bounce off the bottom wall or off the top wall? And what that really means is, well, let's look at the X and Y position of the ball and how does that relate to the size of the screen. So we're using get width and get height, so, you know, to get the dimensions of our screen. And so this is a great program and I encourage you, after you watch this video, to try and play around with it.